Monday, we're the Iron Maidens. We will see you Monday, September 9th on Access TV's World's Greatest Tribute Bands. Up the Irons! Yeah. See ya! I'm Linda McDonald and I play the part of Nikki McBrain on drums. I'm Kirsten Rosenberg, otherwise known as Bruce Chickenson, vocalist. Hi, I'm Wanda Ortiz and I play Steph Harris on bass. Hi, I'm Courtney Cox, I play guitar as Adrian. What does it mean for you to be on Access TV as a World's Greatest Tribute Band paying tribute to Iron Maiden? Christmas morning and eight days of Hanukkah! That's an honor, man. Yeah, that's exciting. Seriously. I don't know. Yeah, but we've been, wow, stuttering. And just doing this for fun for, for like 11 and a half years and to be able to do it on, you know, national TV, on Access TV nationwide, it's, it's awesome. How many different countries and continents have you played in? At least 14 different countries and four continents. Ooh, next to the moon. Yeah. Look out. I think she's been keeping track. Yeah. How many other of the world's greatest tribute bands have you already played with? Uh, Damage Inc. Yes, from uh, season one. Damage Inc. Atomic Pops. Pops yeah. And the Atomic Pops. Um, and the tribute bands that are on season two um, would be uh, David Bowie's Space Oddity. And what is the other? Let's up again. Let's up again. Yeah. You've got to check awesome. these bands out. They're yeah. absolutely amazing. So My favorite Iron Maiden album um, at this very moment, it's any of the first three Iron Maiden albums. <laughs> and my favorite song um, to play live is Phantom of the Opera. And to listen to, I don't have a favorite to listen to because I love them all. All right, for me, it's a, it's a tough question. It's a very tough call, but I'm going to have to go with Power Slave, the first Maiden album I fell in love with. Again, favorite song to perform, ugh, so hard, but Moonchild always gets me going every single time. It does. If I have to pick one favorite album, I would pick um, Peace of Mind because that was my first Iron Maiden album. I like several of the songs. I have a lot of favorites, a couple from her Phantom of the Opera and Power Slave. This changes month, you know, it's month, but uh, currently I would have to go with Kirsten on Power Slave. Uh, favorite song to play live all time, still to this day, uh, Sea of Madness. Which Iron Maiden members have you se seen you perform live and which have you have played with? Well, a few years back we had an opportunity to share the stage with Steve Harris' oh. daughter Lauren Harris, and uh, Steve stayed for our set as well. And Bruce Dickinson, Dickinson was there. also there. Yeah. Uh, we had a chance to, a couple of us had a chance to play with Nick and McBrain for a casual jam at the joint for their touring keyboard player's birthday party, Michael Kenny. We've also had the touring keyboard player play with us at a couple of our shows. We do cover, um, we do perform some songs that Maiden has never played live, One but song. not that many. Your favorite gig? Well, that's, that's a hard call. I know for me, probably Venezuela, we played a festival. Uh, Barquisi, Barquisi Metal, Gilman, yes. Gilman Fest. I believe it was, that was Barquisi Metal. So Barquisi. I think I'm not sure exactly what the name of the city was, but in Venezuela, big festival, outdoor, uh, outdoor festival, and it was just a sea of people, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and some really great bands on the bill, and that was exciting. And high yeah. altitudes, and I was like out of breath. Another that was along that line was when we played in Greece, and it was again, it was indoors, but um, they had two stages, and it was just a sea of madness. It was. A sea of madness. Pun intended. Ah. <laughs> and for our troops in Iraq. And uh, you forgot to mention yes. we were the first female tribute band, to, no, first all female hard rock band to play this. That is true. Yeah. That is 2011. True. Hey, and even, for, I mean, my, I mean, I love Venezuela and all that stuff, but um, top two for me was actually the last tour we did in uh, Colombia, Ozzy Bar, and then surprisingly, uh, Dewey Tama. The, just the crowd there was the small town. Small town. Small town. Small town. Oh, they Man. just put all the other places to shame. But it's a small town. Are you going to go to the Battle of uh, San Bernardino on Friday? Of yeah. course we are. Yeah. How can we not? We're looking forward to it. get in for you? I'm waiting for the engraved invitation from Bruce Dickinson. I'm sure it's going to be showing up at my doorstep any minute. So there's an extra pass just send it over Talk about the state of current tribute bands and the current phenomenon and how it's at the you know height of its existence? It, it is. Um, I think uh, the bar continues to be raised. Um, James Cameron raising the bar, going down <laughs> the sea. 
South Park fans will get that reference, of course. Um, no, I mean it's a it's a tough game. You got you got to be on your game now uh, in the tribute band world. But there are some great bands, and we are so fortunate to know these players and to have shared the stage with them. Damage Inc. We mentioned playing with them before. Just like Priest, Allison Cooperland, Allison Cooperland, out of the cellar, out of the cellar, another all female. Uh, tribute to rap. And Dia, a tribute, an uh, almost all-female tribute to Dia. So talk about your set for a second, for All the right, so hour you're going to play on Access TV. An hour-long set for Iron Maiden, that's really tough, given some of the songs are 13 minutes long. So, uh, but we're going, we're going back to the second album, Killers, and going all the way through A Seventh Son of A Seventh Son. And it's just chock full of fan favorites, hits, it's going to be awesome. Juicy nuggets and tidbits. Juicy nuggets and tidbits. <laughs> Bigger brack. <laughs>